everyone welcome to SK Med concept i hope all are doing well so today in this video i'm going to discuss about placenta previa so basically in placenta previa i'll be discussing what is actually placenta previa what are the risk factors which are responsible for causing placenta previa and some classifications of placenta previa depending upon the locations as well as clinical features investigation of choice and management so these are the content so placenta previa is actually a medical condition in which you can find placenta in the lower uterine segment so this placenta which is lying in the lower uterine segment can either cause a partial or full obstruction at the neck of uterus so the image shown below will give a little more idea about so here you can find uterine wall umbilical cord placenta and cervix so now put your attention towards placenta here you can see that the placenta is actually obstructing the neck of uterus so basically this is the classic presentation of placenta previa but depending upon the different locations we can again classify it which we will discuss in coming slides now let's see some risk factors which are actually responsible for causing placenta previa so definitely those who are having a previous history of placenta previa or those mothers who have an increased age of more than 35 years and also an history of previous cesarean section and uterine curettages. So these are the main risk factors which are responsible for placenta previa. Now comes the classification. So there is a classification known as Brownie's classification for placenta previa. So basically there are four types of placenta previa, lateral, marginal, incomplete, central and central. So lateral in the case if the placenta is dipping into the lower uterine segment but it is not reaching the internal os. And marginal as the name states it is reaching the internal os and incomplete central the placenta is covering the internal os when it is closed and in central the placenta is actually covering the internal os even when it is fully dilated. So this image will give you a little more better idea about what I was speaking about. So in figure 1 this is a normal presentation in which you can find the placenta is properly uh, placed and in low lying placenta you can see that the placenta and the internal os there is only a less than 2 cm distance and in marginal one you can, uh, you can see that it is very close to internal os and partial and then finally complete placenta previa in which placenta is actually fully obstructing the internal os. So now comes the clinical features. So what is actually the main features you have to keep in mind. So the classical presentation of placenta previa is definitely painless antepartum hemorrhage. So a word of caution here, always remember that in placenta previa you will find a painless bleeding whereas in abruptio placenta you will find a painful bleeding. So that is the word of caution you have to remember here. Then the other symptoms are like pallor and the size of uterus will be definitely corresponding to the period of amenorrhea and uterus will be soft and non-tender and most of the time malpresentations are very common in placenta previa and also fetal heart sounds are clearly heard. So again remember here that whenever you find a distress of fetal heart rate that is the most common presentation in case of abruptio placenta. So in placenta previa the fetal heart, heart sounds are usually heard very clearly. So that is also a word of caution you have to remember. Now comes the Stalworthy sign. So what is Stalworthy sign? Basically there is a slowing of heart rate when you press the head down into the pelvis and when you re relieve the pressure there is a prompt recovery of this heart rate. So this is known as Stalworthy sign and this sign is very much suggestive for posterior placenta previa. So always keep in mind. Now comes a word of caution which I have to say it again and again. Never perform a per vaginal examination in case of placenta previa. So why I say this because we know that placenta is actually lying to the internal os, right? And when you perform in a uh, per vaginal examination, you will be taking your hand beyond the internal os. So there is more chance that you will hit into the placenta and you can cause very bad bleeding. So always remember never perform per vaginal examination in case of placenta previa. This is a word of caution you have to always keep in mind. And if you are performing per vaginal examination be ready with all the setup to do cesarean section. Now comes what is the investigation of choice. So definitely in placenta previa the investigation of choice is going to be transvaginal sonography 
so now you'll be thinking if we cannot do per vaginal examination how are we supposed to do transvaginal sonography definitely in transvaginal sonography always keep in mind that the probe of transvaginal sonography is not taken beyond the internal os they will be close they will be kept very close to the target area without touching the cervix okay and then by using higher frequencies we can get a very good resolution of the situation so always keep in mind we are inserting it within vagina without touching the cervix that is why transvaginal sonography is very much better and suggested than per vaginal examination so that's all about the investigation of choice now coming into the management options always remember there are two types of management options you can opt for the first one is expectant management which is also known as mcafe regime so in expectant management the goal is to carry pregnancy till term without risking mother's life and the second case is of active management in which you have to immediately terminate pregnancy whatever the gestational age is so what choice to choose it depends upon the indications if there is no active bleeding hemodynamically stable patient and gestational age is more than 37 weeks with no fetal anomalies definitely you can go for expectant management but in case if the patient has a very bad bleeding and if the patient is hemodynamically stable and gestational age is more than 37 weeks with fetal distress don't wait for expectant management okay so now it's time to revise so let's summarize all the topics which we have learned so far so placenta previa as you know now you are aware that it is actually the presence of placenta in the lower uterine segment by thereby causing partial or complete obstruction then we checked upon the risk factors in we saw that multiparity maternal age of more than 35 years all these other risk factors then we discussed about the classification and we learned four different types of classification as per the location of placenta then we came across the clinical features and there we saw that the painless antepartum hemorrhage is really the main point you have to remember regarding placenta previa and then the respite points and after that the word of caution was never perform per vaginal examination in placenta previa and we learned that the investigation of choice is transvaginal sonography and then when it comes to management always keep in mind we have two options in front of us either we can go for an expectant management if the patient is hemodynamically stable and there is no active bleeding or we can immediately terminate the pregnancy irrespective of the gestational age if the patient has a present active bleeding and also if the patient is hemodynamically unstable with a gestational age of irrespective of any age and also if there is fetal distress so these were the main points which we covered in placenta previa so that's all for today in next video we'll be discussing about abruptio placenta and stay safe stay healthy it's never too late to chase your dreams thank you Thank <laughs> you.